international relations to give me the opportunity to to be the chair of this workshop and i want to thank so, so all the speakers here to agree to be a, an intervenant for this workshop you will see but they are all from different alliances different university and uh, i'm very happy uh, to be here today for, uh, with you so we all have a, a moment of exchange between the speaker and myself and after that we will have a, a moment with the public so be free to uh, ask uh, as many questions as you want and at the end we will conclude about this workshop so um i'm uh, i'm a couple like i say and i will say presentation of the speaker first Alma Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Alma Christopher. Uh, I'm from the University of Iceland. I'm here on behalf of Aurora, which is another alliance. Um, at the University of Iceland, I'm the international officer, which means that I'm responsible for making sure that international students at the University of Iceland uh, have the very best day possible. And within Aurora, I am the president of the Aurora Student Council. Thank you. Then Thomas Kau. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Thomas Calvi. Uh, I'm from the Universe Alliance. So I'm a student representative of the, the Alliance and also the leader of the French student team. And I thank you for coming here today. Then we have Stephanie Taylor. Just Hi, thank you for inviting me. And I'm here on behalf of the Neurotech EU. I'm from the University of Bonn, and I'm the secretary for the steering group of the student council. So I'm responsible for all of the administrative tasks, as well as communication uh, amongst the students, as well as the different working groups. Thank you. And online, we have Mary Marshall, if you can. Thank you. Up. Uh, thank you. Good morning to everyone. So uh, I'm Marie Marchand. I'm a PhD student at uh, CY Sergi Paris University. And um, I'm a representative at the, the sideboard for the PhD students. I used to be a student representative within uh, my alliance. And I was also president of that student council for about uh, one year. And then I'm here uh, to, to explain my experience and what, what I've learned from this mandate. Thank you. Thank you. So now question to the speaker. First question is, why is it essential for you that students participate in the governance of European University? So be free uh, to answer when you want. Um, the foundational role of universities is to provide students with education that appropriately prepares them for the world after higher education. It is therefore pivotal that students have a seat at the table and that their concerns are actively listened to. No decision that affects students should be made without the involvement of students. The future of European universities needs to be shaped with that in mind and have a strong student voice. Students within higher education have already gathered vast amounts of knowledge and skills and are fully capable of having valuable inputs that benefit us on both an institutional level and within the wider context of European universities. Students often have a unique perspective that needs to be taken into account. And additionally, the added experience of taking on an active role within decision-making on governance provides students with an opportunity to trust their instincts, develop soft skills, and speak up on behalf of their values and their communities. I think we can all agree that those experiences are desirable traits that will stay with students long after they graduate and ensure that our institutions are graduating students who are ready to take on an active role that benefits both our individual societies and our collective European governance. You want to add something? I don't think we could have said it any better. <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was just going to comment on one thing. Um, you said everything about building from the ground up, and I think it's really important that as an international coming from Canada, I had never studied in a European university before, and so I come from a very different system where student governance is very strong, and it's, it's nice to have our voices heard. Uh, I would say it's a different perspective, I think. 
and I really appreciate actually being part of the decisions that are being made. Uh, I also have, you know, some different issues that internationals face when they first come to Europe as well, as far as getting registered and finding a flat and everything. And that's all something that when you're building these alliances, it's really important to take into account how difficult it is for people to come to a new country and, and, and move there. And so it's nice that uh, all everything is, is being taken into account. Yes, I think everything uh, has been said, and uh, I will add that um, universities are made uh, uh, for students, and it's important that students participate in the creation of uh, these universities um, in the way that they want them to to yes, to work. And so I think it's important to have a place for students in the governance in order to have a voice uh, in the in the university. <coughs> Mary, you, ask, you want to add something? Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to, I fully agree with what has just been said. And um, I, I also wanted to, to add and to reinforce the fact that who is better placed mm -hmm. than students to decide what is best for students. And this is why we should, I think, change the, the paradigm and think for the students, but by the students, and also to to, to reappropriate the fact that we we have to be involved in governance, and um, and I think the the alliances are the best way to implement this maybe new way of thinking and of working, and this is important for our rectors and and presidents to to invite us at the table. I think. Thank you. So now. We want to know how the students participate in the governance in your university, in your alliances, and for you, what are the limits of this participation? You want to change your thoughts to answer? Um, yeah, so our student uh, council has places in all of the working groups within the Neurotech EU as well as the Board of Governors, and we have a minimum of two, but in most groups, there will be voting positions. Uh, for all decisions that are being made. So we are invited to all meetings um, and take a very active uh, participation in any decisions that are, are made. And uh, a lot of the events have actually been planned from the students and have been a, a big part of the base of the technique so far. So um, we definitely get tools that we're appreciated for the work that we do and uh, do have active exchange quite often with the central office. Uh, yeah, the Aurora Student Council is here with two representatives from each member university. Um, and we have certain positions within the student council, such as president, vice president, secretary, and so on. Um, as student president, I have a seat on the general Aurora board that convenes every six weeks and is made up of five rectors and presidents who are charged with the general management of the alliance. Uh, I also have a seat on the general council, which consists of all of the rectors and presidents of the Aurora universities or their formal representatives, and we meet twice a year. Um, as student president, I also take part in any additional so called presidents meetings. Um, in addition to the student council, we have what we call student schemes that were first established two years ago, and any student at any of the member universities can apply for a position within them. The schemes are two tiered. They can apply as a champion or an ambassador. Um, and as a champion, they put in a specified number of hours working in four different fields, uh, academic skills, working group representation, personal development and reflection, and a collaborative group project. So based on the numbers that, uh, of hours that they complete, they are awarded either a bronze, silver, or gold certification from the organization. Or as an ambassador, they can also get a bronze, silver, or gold certification, but their role is more limited than that of the champion. Um, working group representation means that any student accepted as a champion by the student schemes is allotted a seat on one of our working groups. They can choose which ones they're most interested in, and that work, um, and they work on the actual design and implementation of our projects within those groups. So we currently have students in 27 working groups, working on things such as sustainable campus, IT, supported student services, board-based learning, teaching for societal impact, open educational resources, just to name a few. Uh, we do have some further plans that are in the works, but since they're not finalized, I'm not going to share them at this moment. 
Thank you. I feel like I need to add some things after what she said there. So uh, we have we have representation from all eight of our alliance partners. We did just add two new alliance partners to uh, Neurotech EU. So we have um, on the on all of the uh, working packages we have eight as well as the board of governors so two voting in the board of governors three in all of the work packages and uh, four elected representatives from all of the, the members we can have additional student representation as well that is part of our synapses uh, making connections obviously a cute name for the, the, the group but um, they are involved in all of the student club um, activities and if they want to get involved with the student council they can as well so. Just a little bit more of a breakdown of how we're, we're built. Thank you. Chris, maybe Mary, do you want to explain how it's working here to the alliances? Yes, uh, thank you. I think it's quite similar, actually. So we have some uh, students from the student council, so the, the president and the vice presidents who are taking part in both our strategic board and our executive board. Um, so basically, uh, the, the, the strategic board is made of the directors and presidents of the alliance. And um, it is taking place, there are informal and formal uh, meetings, but there is at least one meeting per uh, month, which is quite good to have a student there to exchange and of course, different, different what we want. And um, apart from this governance board, we also have, of course, some representatives within our work packages. Um, they are not specifically elected students, so it might be whoever uh, wants to, to join. Uh, I would say that the limit of this is that sometimes we have students who are involved in those work packages and as members of the student council, we don't really know who they are, uh, what they do, what they really defend, and sometimes it's difficult to create a synergy between us. Um, we, we, we have struggled getting some information regarding who is sitting in which work package because of our GPD uh, questions and it, it's been so quite quite difficult um, and uh, globally within the student council we are trying to develop also our team to make sure that there is always a representation because as students we have many many things to do and of course sometimes we don't have enough time to dedicate to this uh, to these projects so I would say that that are the, the limits. So yes, in the Universal Alliance, it's quite, quite similar. Uh, students have a significant impact uh, on the project and a significant part uh, in the governance team. Um, indeed, the student representative attends the governing board and they also take part of the work packages. Uh, they have also the right to vote and their voice are counts as much as the other voice of the governance team. And thus, um, they can uh, have an impact on uh, the alliance policy and the uh, projects. Uh, just for the limits, too, um, this participation may be uh, due to the, the, situ the student situation. Uh, indeed, a lot of students in Toulouse, or maybe uh, just a student, uh, are just uh, in the city for a few years. So it's hard to, to maintain a continuity in uh, the student team. And moreover, it's uh, also difficult uh, the student to have uh, the time for uh, the alliance uh, and the projects uh, during an uh, exam period, uh, for example. I completely agree. <laughs> so the next question is how are students appointed and how do the board works more specifically? Uh, I know it's in your mind. Yes, it's right. <laughs> Um, this question is a bit more difficult and a larger scope than it may appear at first glance, simply because the universities within Aurora all have different ways of appointing their student representatives. Uh, each university has two representatives within the student council, but we uh, don't have specific rules for how those students are selected. Instead, we have guidelines. Uh, this is largely because the active presence of student politics within the universities is very varied. Some of the universities have limited councils made, of, made up of only a handful of students, while others have larger operations. And some universities expect students to keep up with their studies while they work uh, for their students' unions or councils, while other students at other universities take time off from their studies in order to work full-time for their students' unions. 
Uh, so it therefore follows that not all students involved in student politics at an institutional level are willing or able to add active participation in student governance at the European level to their current responsibilities. Uh, this month, from the 11th to the 13th of March, I organized a policy making trip for the Student Council uh, to Iceland, where we took it upon ourselves to uh, spend three days working on revising our student handbook and creating a firmer code of governance for the Aurora Student Council. This work has not yet been finalized and has yet to be introduced to the wider alliance, but the guidelines for selecting student representatives will, once this document gains board approval, state that each university has two votes within the Aurora Student Council. So it's recommended that universities appoint at least one elected member from student politics within their own institutions, um, although both of them can be elected officials, and then one from the general student population, which would provide the Aurora Student Council with a more holistic overview of students' interests at each institution. Um, one member would be very intimately familiar with student politics and university management of their institution, and one who could speak on behalf of the general student population. Um, with this new stipulation that the universities have two votes, not two seats, uh, we also allow them to um, use other options, <coughs> such as having three members who can jump in on behalf of each other when one can't make it, or you can have two members who have active vice representation, or in a worst case scenario, you could have one representative from the university if the institution is unable to provide two representatives but that would not affect the, um, the votes of that institution within the alliance. Um, I, I came into this work just to touch briefly on like, how I'm involved, um, because I was hired, not elected, by the University of Iceland uh, to the Students' Rights Office as the International Officer, and that position is part, a part-time job amounting to 50% that I do alongside my master's studies. Um, the 20% position is specifically dedicated towards Aurora, so that's in my contract, regardless of whether or not I were to run for president, 20% of my work is expected to be related to Aurora within our institution and on a wider European level. And I have a 30% position assisting international students locally at the University of Iceland. Uh, the other representative from our university is currently the student council president, but it can be any elected member working at the student's rights office just to touch on how it's decided at the University of Iceland. But as I say, it differs greatly between universities. Thank you. Do you want to hear? Mm -hmm. You must give me a friend. <laughs> Mary? No, it's okay, I can answer. So, um, so how we're appointed. So anyone who wants to be a part of the student representation at any of the Alliance partners can join. Like I said before, we have uh, four elected or chosen members per alliance uh, partner. So that makes 32 representatives uh, in the eight partners we have right now. Uh, from that, we're broken into, like I mentioned already, the working groups, uh, which are in charge of communications. So our social media presence, as well as advertisements for any events, which is the other group that we uh, have. We just recently had our Women's Day event a few weeks ago, Women in Science, uh, Women in Neurotech. You. We also organized the summit. We had a three-minute thesis competition. Where we brought together students from, from all over and had a competition um, at our summit. And then, like I mentioned again, we also have the synapses, which is the student club. So any student who's at a Neurotech uh, EU Alliance partner is automatically part of the student club. And we've created, and we're trying to make this bigger, but a platform where at any point in the day, you can log in and see who's hanging out online and then join the different um, hangout work rooms. You can either talk about science or play games, uh, plan hangouts, um, and also be planning online events there as well. Uh, we do have a ratified constitution. So as far as voting is concerned, we do have that. I'm willing to, to share. Uh, if, if, you, if you would like. Uh, we also have monthly uh, general meetings and then the working groups themselves meet more often. And the work packages, those are organized and managed by different alliance members. So eight alliance members, eight work packages so far, and one member is in charge of each work package. So they're the one who call the meetings, they take the lead, uh, but the students do, like I say, attend, and we do have votes for any, uh, anything that is decided in those meetings. Mary? Yes. 
Um, so uh, regarding the appointment of our student representatives, it depends much on the universities because uh, as you said, each university has its own way to proceed. Some, uh, some student representatives are um, the president of their local student board or student council. Some of them are paid to do the job, some are not. Um, in the beginning, we, we were only six universities when the alliance was, was created. So we only had one representative per university, but we soon realized that it was hard to, to have uh, the participation of uh, every student because of course, as I've already said, we all have our activities and so on. So we decided to extend to uh, two representatives per university. And um, we, we also decided that it didn't have to be someone who had already been elected in their local university because it makes it uh, really harder for them to be involved, whereas they have a lot to do um, in their university. So um, we, 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 we tried, I don't know uh, now what, what they decided, but when I was still president, we thought that it might be a good idea to have within our our local university student council, a dedicated um, position for the Alliance for Utopia. Um, so the, it was the, the project we had. Um, now we are 10 universities, so it means that we can have, let's say, 20 members of the student council. So I don't know how, how they work, how they manage this number, which is growing. Um, mm -hmm. And for, for how we work, um, so in the beginning, we had also a constitution decided that we had uh, one president and two vice presidents, but we, we also realized that we might need to expand, of course, people dedicated to um, the social media and so on. Um, so uh, what we do is that we meet, let's say, every two or three months. We also have a, a drive uh, on SharePoint where we put all the documents, all the ideas. Um, the decisions are always made, of course, uh, according to, to, to everybody's approval. And we also issue some papers, some propositions. Um, and then after we, we try to implement them and to push them forward to during the, the strategic, the executive boards and the work packages. Yes, yeah, so in our alliance, um, any student could join uh, um, the project too. Um, the student representatives are elected uh, by the local team, the, the student local team, and then they join um, the Programming board or the WP, uh, the work package, sorry. And uh, then they could accept uh, at uh, local governances and also general governances. And they could uh, raise the voice of uh, students uh, through uh, questions or votes. And um, yes, it's quite similar to the other alliance uh, regarding the, the rest. Thank you. So, so how they are elected or not chosen? So, do you want to talk about the mission, the daily work? Is there any talk about uh, the events that you? Uh... Yeah, I kind of. But all the questions kind of melt into each other, yes. so I feel like there's a lot of overlap. But, we already uh, talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe uh, Thomas, do you want to explain what are the daily mission, the work of the council? Yes. So the mission of uh, the student council is to summarize the work packages. Uh, uh, work uh, and uh, also the reunion of the governing bodies to the other students. Um, so the local student teams also uh, look like uh, a school association. Uh, we suggest and lead different projects uh, in relation to the values of the alliance. Um, the aim is to create a community of uh, European students who are interested in space. Um, and for instance, we create uh, conferences on space-related uh, subjects, just as um, in May in uh, Krakow, um, <coughs> sorry, um, a conference uh, about uh, uh, space resources and mining. And uh, we also um, lead some projects, uh, and uh, for example, uh, aid for Ukraine uh, students refugees in Toulouse and uh, school universities. We created a, a form for people who wanted to help us to welcome uh, Ukraine uh, refugees. 
students and uh, another one for uh, Ukraine students who want to join Toulouse and to join an university in Toulouse. And then we are able to connect students who can post uh, and the student, uh, the, the Ukrainian uh, students. And uh, when they arrive, we help them with the administration and uh, the request uh, for joining a university. Oh, um, we are our student council's mission is the same as the wider organizations. Our universities are united by their commitment to build a different kind of inclusive university community that works together to find solutions, solutions to globally relevant problems in areas such as sustainability, climate and energy, digital technology and human life and health. Um, the world is increasingly shrinking, technology constantly improving, and this changed world comes with different expectations. So Aurora strives to provide students with experiences that would otherwise not be available to them in the traditional higher education environment and consequently deliver um, education in those areas that are not necessarily a point of focus tradition, uh, traditionally. Soft skills development is just as important as teaching students a basic, the basics of their field. We aim to provide students with a comprehensive education that trusts students' knowledge and capabilities and trains them to trust themselves in those same areas. For that reason, the student council is largely free. Sorry. Um, the student council is largely free to decide their own operations. Uh, each year, the council selects a specific aspect that they would like to focus on for that academic year. This year, the student will and we decide what work we would like to do that would be more, most productive when it comes to said cause. Um, additionally, the student council meets once a month at least and is tasked with communicating information both from the students of uh, their institutions to Aurora and from Aurora to the students. You can, this can take the form of event planning, some of them very content heavy, others social in nature, advertising Aurora's opportunities for education and mobility, speaking at events such as this one, um, writing statements on certain global events like the invasion in Ukraine, um, reviewing policy and so on and so forth. And that's really just the joy of this work, how incredibly varied it is. Mary, you mentioned that you was a student president, uh, president of the student council in a Ethiopian Alliances. What were your mission? Daily. Yes, so uh, the missions were quite varied, and I think it can be very, very time consuming <coughs> if you if you get very much involved in it, which I loved, but it was a lot sometimes. <laughs> um, I would say, just like Thomas said, that um, the, one of the principal mission is to to contribute to building a student community, and uh, by this we we try to implement some actions to to, to think of some actions. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, we 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 created uh, the B Utopian Conference, which is occurring like every six months. It's a conference that lasts. Uh, it depends, but uh, the last time it was for one day and we were inviting many many people discussing about important subjects society projects the last time it was about COVID-19 um, we we of course um, try to to think about how we can contribute to a better future for universities but also for our society and that's why we created a student think tank so it was also our role to recruit the members we wanted to um, to define what what this think tank was going to do and so on. We also created a student forum. Um, there are many, many events that we are trying to create. And in the same time, um, we have this mission of communication to make sure that our students within our universities are well aware of what is proposed to them, what they can participate in. And of course, we are making the link between uh, the, Utopia, um, the Utopia team, the, 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 the presidents, the, the professors and so on, and the students so that uh, everyone knows what is going on between each part. Mm -hmm. Do you want to add something? 
You're already yeah, I was going to say, I think um, yeah, that I agree with what Maria is saying about the amount of work and how it can be very time consuming. So you really have to either be very organized or, or have a good uh, working relationship with your supervisor. I'm in the fifth year of my PhD and I'm really trying to finish this year. So getting elected secretary was uh, a little bit of a surprise <laughs> for him, but you know, you just have to be able to um, organize your projects and, and manage your time well. Um, as secretary, I, I was in administrative work before I went back to science, so it was really easy for me to set up um, and manage all of the different platforms that I'm using, so that's actually working quite well. Um, the daily work for the rest of the student representatives is probably a lot less. Uh, the steering group, which is two co-chairs, secretary and treasurer, has the most amount of work, but then um, the student reps that are in the groups, they, they meet when they want to plan an event or if there's a lecture coming up or if they want to invite someone. Um, and that's a little bit more outside of the, the daily working hours. The work package group does tend to be a little bit overwhelming. Um, we are coming into our um, assessment period for the Neurotech uh, EU Alliance. So the work packages are ramping up, uh, trying to get the assessments done. So that is putting a little bit of pressure on some of the students. I've heard feedback from them that it is getting time consuming, especially when you have eight people or eight alliance partners all wanting to have their voices heard. The meetings can go quite long. Uh, so if you have someone who's managing the time nice and moderating the uh, meetings, then it is good. <laughs> but if not, they can go, they can turn into three hour meetings, unfortunately. So it can be a little bit too much, especially when it's during work hours and our work is all unpaid volunteer. Uh, so the students are hoping that we're being appreciated, which I believe we are. Thank you. So you mentioned that uh, your president, for example, in UK is the president of the student council as a participating executive board and strategic board. So what is the place of the student council or the board? Uh, in the global governance and in comparison with the other world. Um, sorry, do you mean the what's the role of the student council board within the Aurora board yes. or okay. in the global uh, governance area of your eyes? Okay, um, I apparently misinterpreted the question a little bit and just <laughs> thought like what's the role of our student council and the role it's of like the European yeah. governance, um, which I think is um, if we look at the history of sort of academic uh, academia, it can be viewed as somewhat cutthroat, the need for a global accreditation for institutions, um, the need to get accreditation for the impact of your research, the draw of students, the value of your degree, fosters a global atmosphere that is, if not combative, at least competitive. And universities need accreditation to provide degrees that are desirable to students and therefore attract more students because their degree will look good on their CV. So it's therefore perfectly understandable that higher education facilities may have seen each other as rivals historically. And I'm not saying that's a thing of the past. As human beings, we feel a need to distinguish ourselves from the herd. But I do, however, think that cooperation between universities, such as um, the alliances that we are all part of, are definitely a step in the right direction. We're facing a host of global issues. Carbon emissions have long since surpassed critical numbers. The global pandemic affected us all, and the change to society calls for a changed higher education. And the place of the Aurora Student Council within global governance is the same as all of our student councils and or boards to maintain a steady focus on what it is that benefits students, to remind institutions that students are the reason for their existence and to foster an environment of increased cooperation and sharing of resources. Interdisciplinary work for people from different cultural backgrounds is increasingly becoming the norm, and so providing experience in those fields is something universities should be aiming for. Um, this calls for cooperation between institutions, such as these alliances, and further cooperation is then facilitated between those alliances with panels such as the one that we're at today. So I would like to thank the University of Montpellier for hosting us. Um, and as we've seen through the discussion today, we are all united by mutual goals, and those goals won't be achieved in isolation. In order to succeed, we do need each other. So I hope to see the Aurora Student Council continue to be a driving force towards that future. 
I think I did already touch on how the student council is related to the Aurora board, so I don't think I need to repeat that. Thank you. Who wants to answer the question? Well, I think that uh, Anna said everything about uh, the student implication and the governances. Uh, it's important to to make sure that the student voice is uh, taken into account, and uh, that's why in uh, the University Alliance, students are in every uh, uh, governance bodies and governing board. Uh, and uh, yes, I think it's important. Okay. Mary, you. Yeah, I, I agree. And uh, as I said previously, I think that we should really take the alliances and the European universities as a new way to think how we, we include the students in the governance principles. And I think I have the feeling that within um, my alliance, it's it's more easier to to get some exchanges with the rectors and the presidents than, for example, within my university, even if in my university, the student voice is also being heard. But um, there is this frame within the alliance, this new frame where everything is to build when we have the possibility to be really student centered and not only just to have this catchphrase on our on our website. And um, I have the feeling that within Utopia, we are given the opportunity opportunity to, to raise our, our voice and to be heard. Um, it's super easy to, to send a message to one rector and vice rector and to discuss some topics that matter. So um, I think it, it would be my, my, my input on this comparison where I think this new structure of European universities is a huge opportunity that we should take into account and that we should tackle. Well, I was I was just going to say, uh, based on uh, my experience that I had before being part of Neurotech U, I was a uh, spokesperson for the Helmholtz Association, which is uh, one of the largest non-university organizations in Germany. And I can say that being being involved with them for, for two years as co-chair, spokesperson, and then advisory, I could see the, the changes that were made from the work we were doing. So we were invited to the DFG and the DAAD, which are the largest funding agencies. We also had exchange with the BNDF, which is you know, the policymakers in Germany. Um, and we had surveys that come out every two years, and we did actually have invites from all you know, the heads of the, the university organizations actually speaking with us, listening to us, and then making changes happen, and we saw it happen. So I think we just have to keep doing the work that we're doing and keep moving forward because I've seen it here and I've only been in Germany four and a half years. So it, it can happen. I'm quite positive about the future of the alliances. Absolutely. Thank you. So it's the hand of the movement between the exchange. Uh, the speaker. So now we will take questions. So if you have any questions, be free to ask. There is also online question. Everyone's afraid to be the first. <laughs> well, uh... No, you can. Okay, uh, so knowing what you know today from your experiences, what, what is in your opinion would be the, the optimal form of student council? How can you structure the, the council to make it more efficient and to have more impact on the decisions made in the, in the, the governments of the European alliances? The pressure. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, say I'm happy to answer afterwards. But. Yeah, I mean, since we, we were working on um, revising our code of governance, for me, I think that it's um, we need to have a very clear chain of communication. So we need to have a chain of communication between the student councils at an institutional level into the Aurora Student Council. So we are effectively representing the student populations of said institutions. And then we need to have a chain of command from the Aurora Student Council towards the general board. So you need to have very clear um, policy in place about how you can how you can make an impact as uh, an individual, how you can get something discussed at a, a board level of the alliance, 
And uh, for us, I we're creating this data command currently, but it is um, you can essentially book a uh, a piece into the agenda that will be discussed during the student council meeting. You can either put forth what is called a booking, in which case your statement will be read um, as a as a quote entirely as you wrote it to the board, or you can request that something be discussed at a board meeting. And uh, that is then discussed during the student council meeting so that I, as a representative of the student council, can communicate that to the board. Oh, yes. So, yes, I think uh, communication is a key because it's really hard sometimes to communicate with uh, people from other universities. Uh, to make sure everything is uh, shared and that the information goes from the students to the board. And so it's really important to well structure the, the student council and uh, the student team in general. So you're asking about efficiency, and that's something that I tried to implement as soon as, as, soon as I got elected. So we use, um, we use Google Drive and Slack uh, integrated. And all of the Alliance members um, have access to that. And then we have it broken down into different work packages and working groups. Like I said, we have our monthly meetings. And in that, the agenda is set. And we do work quite quickly through um, the, the pieces. We also have um, an onboarding sheet that we're in the process of creating for new student representation. And it's two pages and everything you need to know about the Alliance and the work that we do. And anytime you want to um, add something to the agenda, you can just message me directly and it'll be brought up. So we do try to be as efficient as possible. Like I said, I'm trying to finish my PhD, so I don't have a lot of extra time. Our meetings are quite scheduled and I'm quite strict <laughs> on keeping time. Um, but as far as working with the other Alliance members, everyone uh, from all the different countries have different communication styles. And so you have to be very, uh, Softer when you're when you're in those meetings, let's just say. So I don't have a lot of control over that. I participate, I have my voice heard. Um, communication with the students is really important. So they they know who to talk to, they can talk to us, and we try to make sure that the information is focused um, as much as possible. And just recently, last week we were invited to participate in the Narrow Tech EU graduate school um, that they're trying to develop. And so the student council was invited just as like a little bit of a workshop world cafe. Uh, just to give ideas on what we should develop for the graduate school and what's actually needed and which target specifically. So our voices are being heard. Thank you, your question. Well, um, as we just mentioned again, the voices have to be heard. I would like would be interested in whether you have know, come across a situation where there was a real conflict because one thing is student versus how I have to be aware of. There's no dispute about that, of course. Uh, but how did you manage it? Did you really come across uh, incidences or topics where you say, well, the student perspective on this issue is completely different from that? So you press with the government people and the government people in the new alliances. Because that's a crucial point. So, so how to deal with conflict and, yeah. and have we come across it before? Um, <laughs> sorry. I would say that I'm a little bit more direct. I think that's just the North American in me. Um, and I've been told sometimes that, oh, I need to be a little bit softer when I say things. Um, not that I, I'm rude, I just don't beat around the bush, let's say. Um, so, you know, I, I haven't personally had any conflict, but I, but I have been told that um, with other people, there was some bruised egos, I think, sometimes. So you just, I just had to adjust how I spoke uh, during meetings going forward. But yeah, I was more thinking about topics or issues. Of, that oh, yeah, there's the definitely, person. yeah, there is, there is one thing on um, what's equity and what's equality and what are we actually striving for. So within our alliance, we do have some richer countries and we do have some poorer countries. And when you are trying to create something, is it equal or is it equitable? Right, so that's the, the main talking point right now uh, in the work package I'm involved in. It's on multilingualism, multiculturalism, diversity, equity, and equality. Um, and so yeah, that's there's there's a lot of discussion going on. On you know, a student in Germany is a lot more expensive than a student in Hungary. And so if you have each alliance member get a certain amount of money, you can hire a lot more students in Hungary than you could, let's say, in, in Germany. 
right? So um, it's really trying to find a way to make everything as fair as possible. So I wouldn't say real conflict, but definitely something that needs to be uh, overcome. Mary? Yeah. Um, so regarding uh, an example of uh, topic or issues that cause conflict, maybe I could simply mention sometimes that um, since we are students, we are not always taken mm -hmm. as proper uh, adults. <laughs> I don't know if it's something that you've already encountered uh, in your in your governance, but probably. And we faced some mm -hmm. conflicts during the organization of one event that was organized by the students. And the organization team at the university um, was just being super rude with the students who was in charge of the organization. And considering, considering the fact that uh, himself was not that delicate, it created a kind of conflict. Like everyone was just like, okay, I will do this. No, you won't. Yes, I will. No. <laughs> and um, I think in, in, in that kind of context, you just need to say, okay, I'm president of the student council. I'm going to handle this and try to do the intermediate between um, uh, the, the governance, let's say, uh, secretary general, the students, the teacher, and um, try to be like a, a diplomat, actually, and you develop some some skills that you, you, you didn't know you, you had. So I think the key is communication and also try to for for the let's say the staff members who are working let's assume that students mm -hmm. can also have good ideas and that we should all work together and it's not because we are students that we are going to be uh, aggressive or whatever now, this is i think an a priori we have like students are uh, reivindicative and super aggressive sometimes but I, I i'm not sure it's the case so maybe I hope I answered your question. Actually, I, I'm so glad that you brought that up, Marie, because it made me think of that one time where someone from our alliance brought me aside and said, you know, during the meeting, you were very direct, you weren't rude, but it was, you know, you have to be a little bit more gentle when you're talking amongst the alliance members. And um, it had been brought up that, you know, well, that's just not possible. We just can't do that. Absolutely no, never going to happen. And, and I was just, I was so shocked because I thought, this is unpaid work for us. You actually get paid to do this. <laughs> and you're telling me that there's absolutely no way, no how, not going to happen. And so I was like, okay, well, I think we're going to have to agree to disagree on that, you know, because if you ask the student council, we could probably make it happen. You know, so I think, um, yeah, what you brought up, it, it triggered that, that memory in me. But yeah, students not being taken seriously, I haven't had that issue. And I think that's because I did my bachelor's and then I took five years off and worked in industry and was a manager and I hired and I hired people. And so I don't really, I don't tolerate fools, let's just say. And so um, going back into science afterwards, I really knew what I wanted to do. And I made sure that my voice was heard from that experience that I had previously. I took that into the position I'm in now. So I don't let the hierarchy really affect me. You can be polite with anyone that you meet on the street. It doesn't matter what their rank is. And uh, yeah, so I think that that experience is what I what I brought into this uh, position. But you know, everyone can be confident, and your voice does matter. So. Hi, I'm Christina Kovacs from Hungary. As you have mentioned, Hungary. Yeah. Okay, at the university, and uh, I, uh, we all know that uh, the student population uh, with disability or any kind of special would be five or ten percent in the European universities. And I would like to know what is the situation in your universities or the universities. <clears throat> Are there any representatives of students with disability or special needs in student schools? Uh, our vice president had an injury and um, is, I, I don't know how she would qualify, whether she would, but she has special needs um, because of that injury. And we do um, try to uh, 
foster a community of diversity and inclusion. And if we are discussing issues that relate to specific groups and we don't have a representative of that group, then we will reach out to those people and make certain that we have, um, it's just the same as like no, uh, no, in, uh, no decision that is made about a student should be made without student input. The same would be said for people with special needs. If you're discussing what best benefits a specific group of people, then you need to have representatives of that group at the table. Thank you. Let me have the nothing without questions. Yes. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with that. That's that's how it is with us as well. I can say that in um, our our alliance um, members from Bond, we we don't have any members uh, of of anyone who has a disability, but we are one member short, so <laughs> we're willing to have anyone who wants to join join. Um, but. I think, yeah, again, like you said, it's really important to have all voices heard. And so any decision that is made is always um, made sure to include. Is there a position, for example, for equal opportunities or yes. equal access? Then? Absolutely, there is. Yeah. yeah. And then and again, like I said, in the diversity, multiculturalism, all the, the work package I'm part of, um, we are looking at you know all of those factors. So how is it for people with disabilities um, moving as well? So that's Mary, do you want to add something? Uh, no, uh, we don't. We don't have. Uh, we don't have anyone with disability within the student council, but uh, we are also uh, strongly working on inclusion, of course, and um, we are trying to include everyone, and there is no 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 exception made to that. Maybe just it, it doesn't have much to do with disability, but within the student council, we try to have as many uh, women as men, and we try to have uh, people from every origin. And this is something we are really struggling for. So disabilities can also, uh, of course, be uh, entering into into our values. So. Of course, this is something we are very uh, attentive to. Yes, you already mentioned that um, for students being part of the governing uh, bodies is time consuming, very heavy, time consuming, and requires commitment. And what I have experienced sometimes is that there is this continuity because of the workload that students have from the, the academic year. How do you address this in the different um, alliances of networks to keep this continuity of the representation of students? Maybe I can ask, uh, I can answer, sorry, uh, because um, so we had the, the issue uh, in our uh, alliance. So we try to make uh, the election uh, with, uh, we, do not, we do not elect three representatives at the same time, and we try to make the continuity by electing one by one the representative. So as a, a, a representative could be uh, experienced, could stay, and learn with the, uh, you know, uh, the new representative could learn uh, by the, the experienced representative. And then we try to make role like that in order to keep uh, uh, one experienced representative uh, always on the line. Yeah, and I think I already mentioned this before as well, but for continuity for us, because we have Google Drive and Slack integrated, we also have onboarding sheets. We have managers for all of our working groups and manager emails specifically for that. Um, so whenever there's a new term, there's a handover phase. And so you have someone actually just take over the package from the previous person and that person stays on to make sure that there's a smooth transition and there's nothing lost in translation. Again, the drive is going to stay there and you can go back through all of the minutes, all of the agendas and make sure that everything's in folders for the years and the groups and what's currently going on. So anyone who's new and gets the onboarding sheet, they, there's three things that you have to do. And in one of them is go through the drive and read all the minutes. So you can get caught up quite quickly. Um, and like I said, there's the, the terms that we have, and then there's an advisory position. So you're elected, and then afterwards, your advisory. So you still have to be accessible for the person who's taken over your position so that if they have any questions, you're able to um, give them an answer and have that handle with case. Yeah, we also use like, like Google Drive and we have like a council register from all of the years that we have student council. So even if you have a question about something that you can see in the Google Drive from 2015, 
you can see which people were on the student council from then and you can comment on that. I, yes, I would add that we are also uh, making in place some uh, alumni networks, and so the new representative could ask the ancient uh, representative for a question about organization or about uh, precise, I guess, uh, questions. Yeah, I'm still actually involved in the Hamilton Association student group, and so I still get messages from them every now and then. And it's really nice to see the the new ones that were you know young and fresh when when I was finishing, um, and now their their term is over. So you you students, I think, are a lot more connected now than we were before. So I, I don't think continuity is really an issue. Like for me, from my German perspective, um, it's not enough to get some certificates. Like I already have so much certificates to add on my CV, so it doesn't matter if there's one more or less. And so it's a big question for me, like how to get the students motivated to be engaged, um, and because like the, the other members of our university, like the student members and the council, um, most of them are not participating in an active way. And so like they are more passively, like nothing happens on the board, like there are just two or three universities or members of the universities taking actions, but most of them, like I said, are passive. And so it's my question how to get them motivated to be engaged. I can take this. <laughs> um, sorry to keep bringing up these, the policy making joke that we had in Iceland, but this is something that we have been dealing with. Uh, some universities have not been able to find two representatives for the student council because they don't have um, two members who are interested in taking on the added responsibility without what they see as added benefits. However, I do think that we have seen that having passive people who've been elected into positions at their own universities um, involved in something that they see as an added responsibility and is therefore something they almost dread uh, is worse than having just an advertising position to the wider student population, telling them what the benefits of this is, well, what opportunities for mobility will they be from this, what opportunities for cultural um, uh, like exchange, sorry, <laughs> speaking in uh, English, <laughs> but yeah, um, and like that way you will get people applying for it who see the benefits of the work that you're doing. You will see people who are uh, their own driving force and won't really need to be motivated because they see the value of the work. So I think that uh, we need to sort of shift the, the way that we recruit students away from being like, okay, yeah, you were elected into this role, but now here's another role that you're also expected to take on and onto advertising into a wider student population and seeing who is actually interested in doing this work and motivated to do it well. Um, yeah, that's my solution. Yeah, I was gonna say, I completely agree with you. And I mean, so you're in Germany, I'm in Germany, so you know um, that the BNDF controls how doctoral researchers or PhD students in Germany are paid. Um, for the longest time, the, it was set at a 50% pay structure. And uh, through the work with the Humboldt Association, Max Planck and Leibniz, we actually were able to petition the BNDF to change that to 65% position, which is about 400 euros extra a month. So, it makes a difference, and that happened during my time, which was great. So <laughs> that's awesome. Um, and also, you know, uh, recent vacation days. So seeing that you're actually affecting change is really beneficial. The trips are nice. Also planning the events, prizes. Um, we also do local events at the University of Bonn. So we do like fun runs, and we give away gear. So you can definitely do a lot. Plus, it's something good on your CV. I've had so many opportunities to travel all over Germany and Europe just with my student representation role. And these are trips that are free, you know, vacations, which is nice. <laughs> I get to travel all Europe and uh, be paid to do it. Thank you. So it's just how you frame it, I think.
At least it's some kind of work. Like I'm spending a lot of effort. I'm not going for sightseeing in Mongolia. I put it in and it's some kind of work. And so I see that I like the trips too. But um, I'm also comparing like the staff members. They getting paid usually, and they're having the trips too. But they're working more or less the same. Like they're doing other work package. We are also involved, and it's like. They're getting paid, and we are not getting paid. We all have the trips. It's nice, sure, but yeah, for me, it's, it's <coughs> like even for the German students to to get more of them to say, okay, we need a bigger students pool. So uh, who wants to be engaged? You keep class, and I'm using the same argument. Like you have nice trips, nice events. You meet people, language skills, and so on, and cultural experiences, and so on. But at least they say, okay, I just want to do my program. And I'm not interested to go to any other country twice a year and have a lot of work. So I see this. Yeah, I guess I think it just it depends on what motivates the student, right? So for me, I studied in the center of Canada, and then I moved a 24-hour drive away to the west coast of Canada for my master's, and then I moved across the world for my PhD. And if I want to get a postdoc, I have to meet people, right? And I have to have people want to hire me. And what sets you apart is work on student councils, is organizing events, is inviting speakers, doing all of these things, gaining these soft skills, um, as she mentioned before. You know, those are things that are going to set you apart. Also having confidence when you're going for interviews. I mean, I'm seriously thinking about maybe going to Australia for a year or two for a postdoc and then coming back to Germany and settling down. So, you know, it just, it really depends on the motivation. If you're, a, if you're a German student who just wants to stay in Germany and not do anything else, well then that's fine as well, but I like to move. So for me, this is the easiest way to meet the right people. And just to touch on this, like, because there is different motivation for different students, some people do just want to get their degree and get out of there. Um, that's what why I touched on like this is about um, raising awareness of these opportunities that they exist so that the people who are interested who are motivated by the same factors that you're speaking about um, can be reached and can have this opportunity to experience something that they would be dying to experience so. I think that there are always those people within universities it's just about how um, effective you are at reaching them. Hi, uh, thanks. Um, I have a question concerning the policy <coughs> that we touched on earlier. That I heard some interesting things about the working groups and the organizational styles, but was that placed in the beginning of the, like, the alliance when it was created, or is that something that has been developed over the years by the different student uh, representatives, for example, and was that from the alliance itself, or was that co creation? So, for example, the policy on that you're going to work with certain working groups or that you have two representatives, was that a ballot or policy skip from the beginning or how did that come about? So uh, we, the, the working groups are not student led, they are from the Alliance itself, um, but they are, they're student participants. So we have working groups and then we have task teams underneath each working group um, that are, have more like specified um, projects that they work on. And those are from the Alliance itself, although not all of them were there right at the start. We have seen a need and met it with a creation for other task teams and working groups. Um, I've also been told that if the student council thinks there is a need for a task team that does not currently exist, then we have the power to contact the central office and request that that be created. Um, the student council, I'm not quite sure whether we had two members in our first working year, but since our second, at least, we've had two members from each university. Uh, it wasn't until our second year when Helga Trenersdokter was president, she's also from the University of Iceland, so I know quite a lot about this history because Iceland's a small country and she's one of my best friends. <laughs> <laughs> she um, she is actually the one who pushed for having um, not just a uh, sort of role that you're allowed to listen to board meetings, but you have your vote has equal weight to those of the directors and the presidents. So the student president's vote carries equal weight as all of the other votes there. 
Um, she also guaranteed that at every level of decision making, you will have a student representative. So from the ground up and at the high level of decisions as well, you need to have a student representative that is not just allowed to listen, but is allowed to partake in the discussion and their words and ways. So that's right how it's developed. I don't know whether you asked about anything else specifically, but I hope. Right. Yeah. But attached to the previous question, my question is: uh, Do you think that the medium for the student participation is sufficient in governance, uh, or it should be uh, increased in the case? How will it be possible in the future? Who wants to? Yeah, I'm sorry, I talk so much. No, I was going to say. So you want you're asking. Um, you're asking, sorry, can you repeat? If the, if the, if the degree of the student participation governance is sufficient, okay. uh, or should be increased uh, by the number of students or uh, by the- Okay, yeah, actually, great question, because I was going to answer this and actually tie it in to that, so that, that's perfect. Um, so we did have student representation right from the beginning. Uh, Rambout is our central office, and uh, Tansu was the one in charge at the beginning, and he really did push for a student council. Uh, right from the beginning, as the Alliance has brought in more partners, we are expanding the student representation, and that will also expand in the working groups as well. So, as I mentioned before, the working packages are led by each of the different Alliance partners, but the student voices in those packages are a minimum of three, where we will be increasing that to four in the future, um, based on the Alliance growing, and those are voting voices as well. We are actively participating in those meetings. When they call the meetings, we, we do have our voices heard. So yeah, I think you should grow as your alliance grows. I wanted to ask a couple of what Ram Bridge from the University of Sydney, the University of Science. And I want to ask when the participation in work packets and uh, and having a uh, vote and so on, how are these students chosen? How is this process in I'll say the and so on. And also links to this uh, regarding the, the fact of, of the difficulty of finding students to, to participate in boards and so on. Uh, how are they, they reached out? At least based on the motivation or uh, who votes for the students participating in the, in the council? So I wish we had a surplus of student mm -hmm. representation, uh, but we don't, unfortunately, and I think that's uh, just growing pains at the moment. But um, anyone who wants to use student representation for our, you know, I'm at the University of Bonn, so if you want to be a student representative, you can, and then amongst that, if we had more than the four, um, then we would actually run an election and and have the, the student body vote. Um, unfortunately, we haven't had to do that yet, so anyone who's come forward can just automatically join. We actually have had a quick turnover, which is nice though, so we do have that continuity. Um, and then, the, sorry, the second part of that question. And I asked about the, the participation in work. Right, about, right, okay, so how that <laughs> <laughs> right. So how this how the students work is so once you have your student representation, then you join the student council, and then the student council actually you can choose which work package you want to join if there's space available for you. Um, and so we have three positions in each work package. We have eight work packages, right? And then we have the board of governors where we have two voting positions. So technically, we should have 32 representatives, but we have only 29. Positions. Did I get that right? 26, sorry, 26 positions available. So you would hope that you have more students than you need. Um, and if there was if there was uh, fighting over who wanted to be in what package, then that would be resolved quite easily. But right now, pretty much whatever work group you want to work in, you can. And you see a Absolutely. So like I said, each work package um, is led by a different alliance member. So Bond for us is in, in charge of work package four, but I'm actually involved with work package seven, and that's on purpose. So I'm not in the same work package, though I do attend those meetings as well because they asked me to. But that's because he's the second on my PhD, so you know, you gotta make sure your supervisors are happy. <laughs> yeah, just for us, uh, for example, in the uh, University Alliance, we have different kinds of meetings, so we have. Uh, Meetings, local meetings for the group or for the group packages. 
So every student that are interested in uh, the subject of the work package could assist that could attend the meeting. But for the European meetings, uh, only the, the student representative could attend. And so um, it's an equilibrium. If you want to, if you are motivated and passionate by the, the, the topic, you can join the, the local meeting. I have two questions online. <coughs> This question, I think it's mostly from Mary, because you mentioned that it was easy to contact rectors or vice rectors to address some specific questions or issues. Do you have a specific examples of that? I guess the other question. Okay, uh, just I'm, I'm going to read on the chat box because I can't really hear very well what you said. But, uh, you mentioned that it was easy to contact rectors by treatment. Do you have any concrete? Um, so, uh, yes, I, I was really speaking as a member of the student council. I'm not saying that every student of <laughs> all the alliance can easily contact, of course, rectors or vice rectors. But um, I think um, sometimes when, when we were having some meetings, you could have maybe further support from a rector. For example, you're defending an idea and some rector says, yes, I fully agree with you. And in that sense, um, they might propose you to contact uh, them and to go further within the discussion. Um, I know that I, I had the, the example with um, with some some rector. She she just uh, gave me her phone number and told me, okay, send me a WhatsApp. I want to discuss this with you. And I really liked the idea that there is this consideration of students and that. I'm not saying that every rector is like this, but there are some that are really willing to, to take into account the, the student voice. And I really like the fact that it was easy for me to, to talk with her and to, to see also her vision and to compare what was feasible or what was not. So I, I hope I answered your question. And maybe that would be a way to circumvent that. Um, but we have proposed paid positions for at least the, the steering members and the managers of the groups. And then anyone, anyone that participates, like I said, the participation is a lot lower for um, the, the people who are you know, planning events and such like that. But we would want it to be at least based on how many hours you work, uh, a paid position for that as, as well. So we are trying to get that approved. Hopefully at the next Board of Governors meeting, it'll be presented. But working towards it. how doctoral researchers get paid. And as I already mentioned, before it used to be based on a 50% position and you got 20 days of vacation. You were paid as a technical assistant. You were supposed to work 20 hours a week, but really you were working more than 40. Um, so we had a survey that we gave to 18,000 doctoral researchers and we had, I think, something like 35% participation rate, which is quite high for uh, a survey. We were able to take those results and publish them, have um, interviews with media. We were invited to the DFG and the DAAD, which are the major funding bodies in Germany, to discuss doctoral researcher positions, how we're spoken about affecting change, looking at increasing the stipends that they give to the, the students instead of 50%, they said blanket, it's going to be 65% from now on. And because they made a change, it was actually, we were able to pressure the BMBF to change it from 50% to 65%, which I already said is about net 400 euros a month, which is a big difference. And we also increased the vacation days from 20 to 30. And that happened since I moved here in 2017. And I, and I mean, coming from Canada. Yeah, that was not from the alliance. That was yeah. that was from that was not from the alliance. That was from my previous work before. But I, like I said, I, I can see that change happens, and it 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 can be good going forward. Coming from Canada, we get we don't get any vacation days, so we we have to pay for our university. So I mean, Germany is <laughs> way better when it comes to that respect. But it, it is good that you can see things change. The alliance for us is very new. So we are involved in a lot of the organization and we have been seeing things changing already. Um, but as far as concrete, I know that student voices being, are being heard. 
You said within the alliance, maybe you want to. Um, no, I actually have an example from the University of Iceland itself, not from within the alliance, because so far we haven't had any um, concrete sort of divisive issues between the student body and the, of the governing board of uh, the alliance. But within the University of Iceland, the University of Iceland used to do dental analyses on refugees because it was the only place in Iceland that had the machines necessary to do that. The student council took issue with this because it's not, um, I mean, first of all, it's not technology that can give you a 100% uh, definite answer on the age of someone. It's not always accurate. So there have been cases where uh, children who were fleeing war have been sent back because the dental analysis showed that they were overage. And the student council believed that this was unethical but because it, um, it had monetary value for the university, uh, there was not support within the university council to stop these dental analyses. The student council then had a um, sort of two year active fight for the university stopping this, uh, in which we wrote a lot of articles. We generated public outrage, I would say, that the university was involved in this kind of operation. So I would say that this is one of the biggest issues that I have seen achieved solely from students uh, being the, I mean, the starting point and the driving force behind the decision being made. And the University of Iceland no longer does dental analyses. I do have another example of the um, situation. So, uh, as I said, we, we provide some help to uh, student uh, refugees from Spain. And um, to those students were at the initiative to this help, and we were followed by a lot of uh, students of uh, Toulouse uh, schools uh, out and in the alliance and by the governance of uh, these schools. And so they could um, they, uh, they deployed uh, some uh, plans in order to help us and to help the other associations that provide help to, to the Ukrainian people. So, this is another example. Um, maybe uh, adding to this previous question, um, I was wondering. I mean, as we are talking here about governance, and, and you have all mentioned that the governance and student representation at different uh, universities is quite different, actually. So, have you also uh, experienced already that by communicating with different student representatives from different universities to actually create an impact on? Uh, the governance, so to speak, of student representation in your members' universities. Yeah, I think from the lines back to the university. No, that's that's a great question, and it's true. We actually have students who are in all different career stages in our alliance. So you know, I'm an end stage PhD, but I'm working with second year doctor students in in other countries, in Romania. You know, um, and they don't have the same issues that that I have. And I don't have the same issues that they have, but I think getting a really broad voice um, helps us see what needs to change. And um, it, it's really beneficial to, to everyone. So yeah, we have bachelor's, master's, PhD, and, doc and, doctor and doctors. So it gives us a really good overview of what the students' uh, need needs are. And then we can give that back to the working groups and the working packages and the central office board of governors. And my question was been different direction. Okay, sorry. We have, we have quite, I mean, I'm a of with the journey, so <laughs> we have quite established this, for example, student sort of recreation in, uh, in, in Germany, but it might be quite different in part of the universities. Mm -hmm. So, how is there a mutual learning? about um, what you can do in terms of student representation, not only within the lines, but also one part of the university learning from the other, or one student body, so to speak, learning from one university learning from the other. Is there something, I mean, that goes through the alliance and somehow feeds into, into I mean, well, not imply that it has to go from Germany to other universities, don't get me wrong, but, but that, we, that we learn something, I don't know, the Germans learn from the French or from the Bulgarians or whatever, or Romanians or so. In, in terms of what we have. I, I, I think we're always growing and, and adapting. And I can say that I think the Alliance partners have used a lot of what we had in Germany um, for, for, their, for their student governance because we were so well established uh, to begin with. And we actually heavily used the constitution from um, my previous, <laughs> previous alliance to develop ours uh, as, a, as a scaffold. 
Um, and that's been really beneficial because then they can use that to get proper representation um, at their alliance awareness. So we we are working, moving the living body, right? We're, we're constantly evolving and, uh, and changing. And yeah, we are learning from them. Like I said, you know, I don't work with doctors daily, but they have issues that we wouldn't know about unless unless they were part of the alliance. So it's good to get a <coughs> In your last question, last one. Well, probably this touches the previous question, like um, it's a big topic, I think. For me, it's very interesting because my understanding, my German background, um, um, student representation has a big uh, influence in politics or has such a big, or has a big uh, political uh, sphere. And this is like the previous question, like there are the other countries within our alliances, they say, okay, student representation or our work, the student body has not to be in any kind political. Like, and this is a big topic for us. Like, um, we will have a meeting within our alliance with the student body um, the next days to discuss this, because this all came up when we just wrote the, um, the statement about the situation in the Ukraine. The solidarity statement. They were um, discussing. Okay, probably it's too political. And in my opinion, from my German background, I said no. <laughs> uh, we have to be political because of my background in Germany. I think in Germany there are a lot of issues we are tackling in in uh, student representation, also on political spheres. But <laughs> this is my question: Like, or how do you deal with it? Like, with the alliances on this topic, or the understanding of your political mandate? I would say that there's a there's a difference in what it means to be political to because everything is politics. Having a class of milk is a political decision. You're choosing to support farming. Everything is politics. And so for me, uh, the question isn't whether or not student politics is politics, because of course it is. It's that you're not directly affiliated with any political party within your countries, because political parties within the country should not have a direct um, way into the universities. It should be its own thing. And they should never be afraid to stand up against the government, no matter who is in majority of the government currently. So for me, it's about, um, of course, it's a political uh, subject. Of course, the students should be a political force, in my opinion, but they shouldn't be connected to a single party because the interests of students should always be placed first there and not the, the, government, the government's uh, agenda or whatever is going on there. So for me, that's, it's been a big debate at the University of Iceland because there are, um, there are student political parties within the uh, University of Iceland and a lot of people externally perceive them as being like run by the um, government's parties, but that's not accurate and you have a very cohesive uh, membership in both parties from different political parties and some who are unaffiliated. Yeah, so actually one of the, one of the statements on um, the the alliance that I was part of before the, the website was that we do not have any political affiliation directly. And if one of the advisory at some point in the future, an alumna uh, became affiliated with a political party, they would lose their status as far as talking about the alliance. They couldn't use it as a political talking point, if, if that makes sense. They would, or they was discouraged as well, because then we didn't want to be affiliated specifically with just one group. So it's just important to stay in local. Thank you. So I have the privilege to conclude. Yes, or <laughs> thank you all for your question. Uh, thank you for the speaker from uh, Aurora Utopia University and your take alliances. Uh, student voice needs to be heard, and this how is crucial in many ways uh, through the student content, <coughs> through the work, the work package you mentioned. The students need and have to give their opinion about so many subjects, you talk about inclusion, student life, uh, you talk about initiative for the refugee um, from Ukraine. So from my experience, we talk, uh, talk about me. Um, <coughs> I was elected a couple of months ago, so I arrived in Charmy Alliances, and we were working on the governance and uh, working on the student part of the governance. 
And I was uh, struggle it was really uh, something that, that I didn't know how to create a student concert from scratch. And you mentioned uh, continuity, how can we um, travel, work on this? And I had the, it was hard to, to talk about to the other students who worked before me on this subject. And uh, so I made a proposal, I went with all the team to create this student concert, we're still working on, on it. So I made a lot of research. I look for all your student concert, how it works, talk about how they are appointed. It's not an easy work to say that uh, as a student is very time consuming. So for my opinion, they need to be paid as a student <laughs> because they, they do time, they are volunteer. But uh, in my university, some of the students are paid for their work. So it's also a necessary question to, to recruit. So salary is a, it's a good argument. And I was working uh, in my ideal student council, uh, two representatives from two, two students sorry, uh, per university in uh, the islands, one from the program of Changli, uh, who knows and uh, who lives there is a whole day uh, the program. And one from uh, a student representative from each university, we all have different system, we saw that. In my university in Montpellier, we have a very strong system about election. So uh, myself, I'm, uh, I was elected as a student vice president. So I'm paid this year, I have a contract. And uh, I have this also a very political matter. I'm a member of the political team around our workers. So it shows how important students uh, are and how it's value. So I think we should uh, work on that value, their, their ideas, their position. So uh, thank you all to uh, attend to this workshop. And I hope uh, you enjoy it. Thank you so much for the invitation. Have a nice day. I'm sorry, I couldn't be here. <laughs> Thank you for your participation. Thank you. Bye.